So in China, also um, in ancient times, most masters they had to hide themselves and teach only a small, discreet group of disciples that dared not go out in public. The more famous, the more difficult to get this master. So in ancient times, to get enlightenment was something very far out of reach. Also, the communication and the transportation were not as good as uh, our present time. Therefore, in ancient times, the disciples treasured the Master's teaching because it was very difficult to get. Very difficult to get even one line of it. In our present time, there are more advantages in communication and transportation. But then, it also requires the public's karmic affinities, meaning we have to sow a lot of good deeds together in order to make a good atmosphere to lift up our mental understanding, our own consciousness, in order to accept something new, something that we have not been able to understand before or have not heard about before. This is also difficult. The transportation, the communication, doesn't mean anything that could help us. It helps us a little bit only. It can bring me from Taiwan up to here only. But then the acceptance has to come from people's mentality, from their own level of understanding and their own level of consciousness. Now everyone has a different level of consciousness. Therefore, a doctor will think differently from a garbage collector or an engineer will think differently from a taxi driver, maybe like that. Now, from the outer appearance, both of them look the same. Hmm? A taxi driver and a doctor both look the same, except when they wear uniforms. Otherwise, they look the same. But inside, there's a different knowledge. The taxi driver doesn't know much about medical problems. He doesn't know how to cure a person's sickness. The doctor can. He can look at your face. Some doctors are so good. He just looks at your eyes, your face. He knows where your sickness is. And some Chinese doctors, they just feel your pulse and they know exactly where the sickness is. And some are even better. They just look at you and they know where your sicknesses are. And they don't need to feel your body or diagnose or heal your heart or anything like that. This is a different degree in the same field even. So the same with average people. Everyone has different thinking because of different backgrounds, different previous lives, backgrounds, different education, and different environmental effects. So it is no doubt easy for us to accept the fact that someone is more intelligent than someone else. And there are even some who are greatly intelligent, and that's very easy to understand. And this great intelligence is like that of Jesus Christ, Buddha, Confucius, or Kongzi, those ancient famous masters. Now, if we can accept that these ancient famous ones are great in wisdom, then we can also accept that at present there are some who are also the same. Because we human beings do not change. Since ancient times, we also have a nose here, two eyes there, and a mouth in the middle. Maybe your skin is white and mine is yellow, but in general, we are the same. And even then, in Western and Eastern countries, since ancient times, there are many masters like Socrates and Plato and uh, ah, so many more. Huh? Aristotle? Yeah, 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 that's it, that's it. We can name only a few because some of them are not famous. Most of them, I can assure you, most of them are not famous mm. because they hid themselves. They didn't have enough time to hide, let alone to be famous. Only Jesus was famous. Why? Because they crucified him and gave him advertisement, free advertisement. Yes. So up to now, the price is that 2,000 years later, people still know his name. And Buddha, because he was a prince, he had a noble lineage. People already knew him before he became Buddha. Of course, everybody wants to come and learn with a prince who has become enlightened. He had already the advantage of being a noble being.
It is like that. So both of them are a little famous. And then Confucius, he went from one nation, from one king to another, to advertise his doctrines. And some of the kings and the great mandarins, oh, the high government officers, believed him. Some of them believed him and made him famous. Once you associate with this kind of society, high society, you very quickly become famous. Is it not so? If they believe you, they promote you. <laughs> Especially in ancient times, the kings and the government officers are all there is to is in this world. <laughs> they have destinies in their hands. So it was very easy. Other people are not so famous because they were not known to the public, although worshipped by their circles of disciples. If they don't leave any doctrines behind, or if they don't decide to leave their teachings behind, then we won't know. Even if some of their collected works were left behind, they are not necessarily safe with time. Things became destroyed and burned, and all kinds of disasters will befall these kinds of enlightened persons. Uh, I think I talk too much now. I think I will let you talk. <laughs> if you have any questions, uh, you are welcome now. Many, Many questions? Uh, would you prefer to come and ask yourself, or would you let our people read it so everyone can understand? Is it better to read it? Yes. All right, thank you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you understand her English as well? Yes. Oh, that's thank you. perfect. Good. <laughs> There are so many who claim to be masters. How can we know which ones are true masters okay. so that we will not be Deceived. led astray? Yeah. yeah, this is very sincere question. <laughs> yeah, very sincere, very straightforward. <clears throat> now I will tell you, it's very easy. First one, the real master will not accept any donation for her of his own use. He or she lives from her own hands. That's the first question. Because God only gives, doesn't take. Have you ever seen uh, God come down and take any offering from you? <laughs> no. So if the one who proclaimed to have God's power within, he represents God, he works for God, he must have this God attribute. He must not take any offering for his own private use. His or her, whoever, I don't care. <laughs> And then the second uh, uh, attribute is that he or she must give you some proof of enlightenment. For example, if she says or he says, anyhow, he or she, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Inside there is no she and no he. That master, if she or he proclaims that she has the light, then she must also give you the light give you proof that you can see the light and you can hear the word of God, the word as in the Bible. Yeah? Whoever can give you proof of these two, the light and the word of God, the vibration of God, then you can believe. Otherwise, how do you know he or she has anything? It's like somebody says to you, I'm a millionaire, I have a lot of money, and then you want to see a little bit of his money, say, ah, oh, you believe in me, it's enough. <laughs> it's not enough. Yeah, at least he should show your credit card, <laughs> a check. <laughs> yeah, and if he is even generous, he will give you some, and then that can be of any use to you. Otherwise, he talks for uh, a hundred years. He has money. What is the use for you? No use. If you are thirsty, you are hungry, but he gives you no financial help. That is a useless millionaire. <laughs> Whether he is a millionaire or not, we cannot. These are the two conditions of knowing if it is a real master or not. First, they don't accept any offering for private use. Second, he has to give you some proof of the inner enlightenment. He has to give you a light. Guru means light giver, darkness remover. Every day you see darkness, if he gives you light, that is a guru. And then the sound you must also hear. Because in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God. If you don't hear this sound, means you have no contact yet with God. The light is only one attribute of God, not perfect. You have to hear also the sound. Now, you may ask me, why is it? 
why can we not only see the light and have to also hear the sound? Why do we have to use the hearing method? I may tell you. Our physical eyes can only see one dimension. I mean, in the front. If you want to see here, you have to move to the left. If you want to see the right, you have to move to the right. If you want to see behind, you have to turn completely. Now, our inner eyes are similar. Even though your inner eye is open, it has the same effect as the outer eyes, meaning you can only see the front or whatever direction you look at. Now the ears are not the same. Even our physical ears have a multi-dimensional purpose. Eh? You can hear from above, you can hear from beneath, you can hear from right, from left, from behind, from the front. Is that not so? Yes. Now, our inner ears are also the same. You can hear from all directions. Therefore, we become all-knowing. Understand? Yes. If we only see but we don't hear, then <laughs> we are deaf. <laughs> then one of our organs is not in order, is not in use. We are not perfect beings. Therefore, the hearing organs, be it inner or outer, are the perfect ones, more perfect than the eyes. Therefore, we have to practice the hearing method. Outside, we use the physical eyes to look. We use the physical ears to listen. Inside, we also have to use heavenly eyes to look and heavenly ears to listen because uh, the sounds that come from all directions. We have to use the hearing organs, whether inner or outer, in order to become a perfect being. If our ears are not in order, we are not a perfect human being. Therefore, our inner ears also have to be in perfect order. At the moment, we have our inner ears, but they are not yet opened. Uh, at the initiation, I will help you to open them, and then you will hear the different dimensions, celestial vibration. By coming in contact with this vibration or so-called word in the Bible, we become all-knowing, we become all-powerful, all-blessing, all-virtuous, all-satisfied, all-happiness, and all-bliss bestowing to the people in our environment, and even our surroundings will be blessed with our presence. Everywhere we go, that being, that place, we become sacred, we become blessed, they become more happy, more lifted up in human consciousness, whether they know it or not. But most of the time, uh, they will not know. They just feel there is a change in their consciousness by being in contact with us, but they do not realize what it is. They don't know why. And that is how we distribute our God's blessing to the world. If we come in contact with this God power, then we can distribute it. That's our contribution to this world, the best, the highest contribution, more than physical help, more than financial help. It is God's blessing, the wisdom. And uh, there is some other things. Also, to know a master, it takes time. First of all, these two primary conditions make you know a master. But then you still have to go higher in consciousness yourself in order to realize how great a master is. But the safeguard is that he will not be abused through your financial or physical contribution. And that's it, you are safe. At least that person doesn't want anything from me. So I can safely learn with him or with her and then I see whether it's good or not. If it's not good, I can always leave. I lose nothing, understand? That's just for your safe side. It means you don't lose anything whatsoever. No condition is imposed upon you. Therefore, at least you are safe. Whether that master is good or not, later we will discuss. <laughs> <laughs> at least he will not abuse your innocence and doesn't want any contribution on your part. And that's a sign of a real master. At least you are safe, that's it. And the power of the master, at the time of initiation, you might know a portion of it. And then as the days go by, as you practice, you cleanse yourself, you understand more, your wisdom opens, and you realize how great the Master is. To know a Master does not take one day, but you may know a little bit of it by the proof she or he gives you at the transmission time or initiation time. Yes, that's it.
but at least she wants nothing from you. And that's the safe side. Yeah? And to know something else takes a little bit of time. Mm. But you may know it. Some people know the Master very quickly because every day they get blessing every day, their life changes every day, they get bliss and power every day they know. But some people may take a little bit longer, that's all. But more or less at the time of transmission, you know. Master Qinghai, what is your thought on the animal rights movement that is now beginning in this country? Do you agree with their methods? Animal people, right? Yeah. Animal people, right? It's movement. movement. Yeah. I That's completely it. agree. We are vegan supporters. And I do not agree with uh, violation of animal people's innocent lives. Of course, I completely support. Was it the right way to study Buddhist studies and where to study? The right way to study Buddhism is to go within yourself and see where the Buddha is, not in the doctrines, but in you. Because the Buddha said Buddha is within you. He didn't say the Buddha is in the doctrine or in any church or in any temple. We forgot this. After he died, we built many temples, make his image and bow there in front of wooden statues. And then we ask him for this and that and other. The wooden statue cannot give us anything. And then we become frustrated within the Buddha is not having any power. This is because we've looked in the wrong direction. To study Buddhism, go inside. And the go inside method I have. <laughs> I can tell you how to find the Buddha. How can we be always happy and immortal? How can we be happy and immortal? Yes, always. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, there is a way. There is a way to everything that we want. We must know where to find it. If you want to live forever and be happy, I will offer you that method. It's very easy. You should devote a little bit of time every day to acquire it. And in a very short time, you will know. Very short time. For some people, it takes just a few days. Some people, on the first day, they know that they're immortal. But this, I cannot use the language to explain to you. You must experience it yourself only, and you alone will know. And afterwards, somebody will ask you, what is it like? And then you will become dumb again, just like me. <laughs> it cannot say much. We only know, realize, and experience it ourselves. What is initiation? What kind of requirement? Initiation. Yeah. yeah. Outside, we have uh, written some kind of requirements. Actually, I myself require nothing. It is you yourself who have to require it for yourself, some discipline. For example, if we live on animal people diet, and that is detrimental to our spiritual life. And now, I tell you, the secret is to cut it off. <laughs> it's for your own good. Eh? For myself, I require nothing from you. You don't need to change your husband, wife. <laughs> no need to change your job. You don't need to change uh, any social contacts or any religion. If you are Christian, be so. If you are Jewish, believe that. If you are in any religion and any school, you are free to stay there. I just tell you how to acquire your own highest potential power inside. And that is what any religion names the highest. The Buddha's name is the highest, the Christ's name is the highest. And I want you to find that power, that's all. But you must be pure in speech, body and mind. For example, in mind, we must not think of any violence. We must think of love, forgiveness, tolerance and forbearance. In speech, we must speak of wisdom, of soothing comfort to our associates. In body, we should uh, live a pure life, more or less a chaste life. A chaste life doesn't mean you don't have a husband or a wife, but you have only one husband or one wife. That's it. That is a chaste life. <laughs> and then, <laughs> to be chaste means you give up all kinds of uh, drugs, alcohol, and gambling, this kind of things. It makes people confused in their minds, makes the body weak, 
and causes mental diseases. That is a just life, a pure life. So the body, speech and mind, you should um, adjust them to uh, God's virtue. That's what I mean. Because you want to become God. You want to become, I and my father are one. Now you may wonder if God gambles, or God drinks any liquor, or God has any terrible adulteries, or all kind of lower desires. Yeah? So if we want to become one with God, of course we have to live our own body, speech, and mind to match Him. So this is a condition. You should be vegan and be chaste in speech, words, and mind. Be loving and not violent, that's all. Uh, for example, before you used to beat people, <laughs> and now if you want to practice uh, this method, then please don't beat anymore, <laughs> that's all. And before, if you loved eating animal, people, meat, and now out of compassion and love for life, you just abstain from it to show that you are one step higher in God consciousness and you have more compassion. You practice love and mercy. And that's just the condition. Very easy. No? <laughs> <laughs> yes, we can do that. We can. Is our past karma affect the present life? How can we believe it? What is the proof? Thank you. Ah, it is not easy to prove this, but I can try. We do not need to talk about the past life which is unreachable. For our mortal understanding, we will talk about the present. It's easier to understand. For example, if every day you drink alcohol, if in the morning you drink alcohol, then in the afternoon, what do you feel? Lovely, fantastic. Or you feel drunk, terrible, headache, lousy and sluggish. You feel terrible, right? Yes. Yeah, that is the effect of <laughs> what we call the past karma affecting the present. If you did not drink so much alcohol in the morning, then at noon you won't feel so terrible. Or in the afternoon you won't feel so terrible. You will feel clear-headed and very happy, yeah? and very normal. That is the karmic effect. We call it the past affecting the present. So very easy. Now these things are easy to understand because it is in the same time and in the present time. But if something happened so long ago, centuries ago, then of course we do not understand. Every time we are born again, we change into new clothes. Like this body has new clothes, and we forgot what kind of clothes. The fact that we uh, forgot the, the past is also a blessing for us. Because what is the use to us if we remember that last life we were a tiger? Hmm? or we were a wolf, <laughs> or we were a kind of very terrible uh, president or very terrible king. This will make a very, very heavy pressure on us. Yeah, We cannot even deal with our daily pressure. How much more so if we have to deal with the past karmic burden, the mental burden? So it is a blessing that we don't remember the last life. And that is especially designed from God from the Lord of Karma that we do not remember, so that we may live a bearable life. <laughs> Actually, when we practice some kind of meditation, even just an ordinary meditation, not to mention about our method, some people would see their own past lives, because there is some kind of uh, sphere which uh, records every minute detail of our last existence. And when we reach that so-called library, we can see everyone's life like an open book, including our own. So, actually, when we practice our method, we can also reach there. If it is useful for us, the Master will let you see. If it isn't, or if it is out of your forbearance, meaning too much for your own enduring power, then the Master will cover it, he won't let you see. So the secret of life is there is nothing secret. It is the matter of reaching the right library and then seeing what is in store before and after. 
So you can prove it for yourself even. You can prove for yourself. No one can prove it for you. For example, if you ask me, how can I prove your karma? Now I would tell you, for example only, huh? don't believe it. I will tell you, oh, before you were a tiger person. Yeah, and now you ask me for proof. It is very difficult for me. Because you are here and I am there. I see things differently from how you are seeing things. The one who is on the fifth floor sees more parts of the city than the one who is on the second floor. And the one who is on the second floor or we not believe what the person on the fifth floor is telling him because he himself doesn't see it. Understand that? Yes. So the proof or no proof, uh, uh, leave it for later. You uh, should be more concerned with the present life. For example, the past life we cannot change. It's gone. It's already happened. So we can change. We can worry about this present life and the future. And now we can change the future, and that is a good thing. The future and the present are so important to us, not the past. The past, we cannot do anything about it. And even about the present, we can't do much. But we could minimize it, could smooth it out by our own God power within us. Every day we take it out and use it. For example, you have a treasure or inheritance from your parents a million of dollars treasure laying hidden somewhere and you don't know where it is. And every day you go and work very hard and earn a little money. But the fact that you know you have a treasure somewhere doesn't help you, does it? But if you know where it is, then you can take it out and use it every day. And now you own somebody uh, $100,000. You cannot change that. You already borrowed money from him. You cannot change this, but you can take your money and give it to him. Understand? Make your life more comfortable. No lawsuits and people coming and dragging you out and scolding you and beating you because of owning people money. And that's how you can change your present life. Now our present lives are fixed from the past, so-called karma. As you sow, so shall you reap. Therefore, our happiness our sorrows are fixed because of our own past actions. Just like we own somebody money, and that we cannot change. We already spend that. So now we have to bear it, or if we have money, we give it to him, and then we are free. The same. Our present life may be miserable or unhappy because of our past life, or due to the past year's wrong actions. But now, if we practice we take the inner blessing power in use, then we can minimize this misery. And that's how we can help and change the present. And of course, in the future, nothing unfavorable will happen to us because we have so much merit in store to alter the future. Yeah. The same as we have discovered our treasure. And so, now we give some money to our creditor, and then we even have a lot to use in the future. In the future, we can avoid borrowing money. We can avoid being poor. Yeah, the same thing, same thing. We cannot change the past. We have to smooth out the present and change the future. And this is the purpose of practicing uh, the immediate enlightenment method, the Quan Yin method. Quan means you contemplate. In means inner vibration, inner sound. So Guan Yin, this is a Chinese word for contemplating the inner music. I am Rome Catholic. I have accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior. I have begun chanting Namo Reiki Ko, which in Shoshu Buddhist practice. It's one in conflict with the other. It's the father name Yahweh. Yahuwah, Yehovah. I, I don't understand very well. Oh, there. The oh, yes, please explain to me, yeah. because the English may be lousy. It's not your fault. <laughs> you say you are a Roman Catholic? Yeah. You, yes? You have been baptized? And uh, I just began a practice, a Buddhist practice. I understand to be 
Um, from the temple, Peace Lord, Shoshu, and we, Japanese, then? And we, and we share Dongyon over again here. Ah, yeah. Ruilianzong. I'm trying to find that. Um, is one in conflict with another? Ah, is the Buddhism you're practicing now in contrast with your Catholic system? Is that right? That's right. Oh. Ah, no. Uh, and yes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's like this. It's true. It's true. Yehovah. 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 Yeah, Yahweh. So you understand? You are afraid that you. I do not want to be. I I the reason why I'm here is for my soul to be enlightened. Yes. Possible. Yes. And feel that you are in conflict. I don't know. I understand. No, you have not. You have not. God will, even if He says so, He will forgive your earnestness for enlightenment. It is because you are looking for God that you go from door to door. It isn't that you want to do bad things. I don't believe there is any so called jealous God. But anyhow, <laughs> anyhow, the practice of Ru uh, Lian Zhong, this is the lotus school. Ru uh, Lian, so this is a Chinese word for a uh, lotus school. You're practicing the lotus sutra method, I understand. They are uh, repeating the name of the lotus sutra. But for what I understand, and what I realize is that repeating the name of a scripture means nothing to God. God is within us, not in the scripture. So Jesus, when he was baptized by John the Baptist, what did he see? He saw the light from heaven coming down like a dove, no? Yes. So if you repeat the names of the Lotus Sutra and you don't see any dove coming down, that means you practice in the wrong way. Whether you call it Buddhist or Catholic practice, I don't care. I am a Buddhist by origin, but I feel that I know that most of the Buddhist methods are even contradictory to the Buddha's teaching. They only talk and talk and repeat words and have no inner light or inner experience. So now I tell you, do not abandon your Catholicism, but I tell you a method to acquire the light within, and that's all. Do not worship me, and do not become a Buddhist, and do not go to any Buddhist temple, and do not come to me even. I don't care about all of this. I just tell you how to go in yourself and see God, and see what you want to, and what you've always longed for, that God, that Yahweh, or whatever you name him. You can call him another dozen, hundred names. He would not mind. He has no name, understand? Yes. He has no name. He takes on whatever name of the Master on earth at that time. Therefore, when Jesus came, they worshipped Jesus as the Son of God, or as even God. Yeah? When the Buddha came, they worshipped Buddha as God. Because the God power manifests in that person, in that human pole. The human is just like an electric wire. It carries the electricity inside. So if it's red or yellow, it don't care. The important thing is it has electricity inside. Otherwise, it don't call it an electric wire, an empty wire. Yes? So there are all kinds of methods. If it doesn't give you electricity, if it doesn't give you light, or God, or heavenly spirits to look at, then it is an empty wire. It's not an electric wire. And it's not Jesus' method. This is an outer method. I don't care if it's a Buddhist or method or whatever. Or an empty, empty shell. So therefore, you feel in conflict. If you learn this method from me, you don't need to change to become a Buddhist. You don't need to repeat anything. You just see the light every day and feel joy, be in the presence of God. And then you call him whatever name he tells you to call him. You will know him by different hundreds of names or no names. You just feel his love and mercy, and he takes care of you every day and every minute detail. And then at that moment, you really feel thankful to God. 
you really know him and worship him. That's a real worshiper of God. If you don't know him, it's not real worship. You don't know how great he is. And then you just blah, blah, blah. Oh, you are so great. You are so merciful. In fact, every day you are so miserable. What does he help you? Nothing. Then you tell lies. You can only say, God, you are so merciful. You are so loving. You are so compassionate. When you know how he compassionate, where, how, in which way that he helps you, how he takes care of you every day, then your words are true and your worship is sincere. Understand? And you throw yourself at his feet and become one with him. And that's the true way to God. It's no religion, it's no dogmatic things, not blind belief, not blah blah repeating, but knowing, realizing, seeing, huh? and contacting. And that is the real path. Huh? I have no Catholic path, no Buddhist path, no lotus path, no lily path. I have only one path. It's God's path. If you know the light, you know God, that is the true way. Yeah? Mm. That's all. Okay? And don't feel any conflict. Even if now you believe in a lotus school, God would not punish you. It doesn't mean you betray Him. He only feels touched by your devotion and your blind search for Him. He would help you only because of your sincerity. Therefore, He sent me here to tell you how to find Him, not through the lotus repeating, not through the scripture, but through your own self-realization. Yeah. He would not punish you. You would not betray any God. It is your sincerity that counts. It doesn't matter where you go. You only carry God in your heart, no? You only want to know Him. That's why you come here, you go there, you ask this master, ask that person, do you know God? He says, uh, yeah, this way, this way, and then you follow, and then you have found no God, and so you feel struggling again, and you go a different way and say, do you know how to find God? And they say, yes, yes, this is only an empty promise. You must know, when Jesus baptized people, he gave them light. And when Jesus himself got baptized by John the Baptist, he got the light from heaven, like a dove. So you have to see that. If you see that, that is a proof that you practice the same way as Jesus did, you understand? Otherwise, it is all wrong. It is all a misunderstanding. How many more questions? Oh, yeah, I talk too much. <laughs> Excuse me. How do you distinguish the voice of God from your own ego's voice? How do we know God's voice? Oh, this is different. That's why we have to practice. The ego... The ego will fall away once we come in contact with the God power. At the moment, we are all doing with ego. We have this person, we have that person, this is our ego. We feel a sense of satisfaction that I help her, I do this for her. But when we are in contact with this supreme power, we lose this sense of I doing things. We see God does everything, and God uses the body. And that body is also God. The one who helps and the one who gets helped are all God. Understand? And you don't feel that separation anymore. Come here. Uh, let me read and answer myself. <laughs> and more quick, quick, quick. What is the immediate method to enlightenment? Oh, yes. That I will teach you at the time of transmission. Because this method does not use language. <laughs> I will sit there quietly and then you get it. And now I talk too much, it's all advertising for cookies. <laughs> <laughs> How long will we travel to the universe? Oh, this is very quick. Hmm? At the time of transmission, you might get it. But for some person, it takes a little bit longer. It depends on how virtuous you are from the past life and how much you believe in the master power. Why does energy follow the path of least resistance? I do not understand this, I'm afraid. You have to clear it up for me. Please bless me with every way. May I ask this? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, merci. 
Oh, you are so kind. Even got your address here. <laughs> People already put their address here. Very good. Uh, you can only bless yourself. I cannot bless you. Marine, I cannot bless you. You have the blessing power within you. I can only show you how to use it. If I could bless you, then I could bless the whole world. Then I would not need to come here. I stay at home and bless. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot cheat you. I cannot tell you I can do for you everything. You must make a commitment. First, you must sacrifice something. You must show your sincerity to God. You must be a vegan. You must devote some of your time every day to contact Him. Every day He waits for you, but you are busy. Every day He wants to give you blessing, you are busy. I can bless you also, but only if you make the first step by getting initiation, and we are together, and then we can connect. Now at the moment, my telephone and yours are cut off. <laughs> And whatever blessing comes, it will come to the middle, and then it will come back to me. Just like I talk to myself on the phone, and you hear nothing at the other end, because the telephone is disconnected. So at the initiation, we are connected. The telephone is fixed again, and then all my blessings will become yours. I reserve nothing for myself. You are free to take all my blessings, but at the moment you cannot take it, uh, not to a certain degree. You take a little bit, yes, of course, you take a little bit, but not every way as you asked. Bless me in every way. This you can only do by your own effort. Even I can bless you a little only. So do it yourself. How to practice to become a Buddha? Oh, this I will also tell you when uh, I transmit this silent power. <laughs> it's easy. We can do that at the time of initiation. Do you want it today? Hmm? Give it today? Today initiation? <laughs> I'm afraid you have no time. You can do it until midnight? Yeah? Yes. Okay, I don't mind. All right, then I stay and give you initiation. Who, who wants initiation? No, you have to go outside and quickly fill out the form. The other stay and listen to the answers. The other ones go out because we don't have much time. You go out and let my disciples explain some uh, basic things to you, and then later you come back here and get initiation. Okay? Those who want initiation, go outside, and my disciple will tell you some basic things that you must pay attention to. The other ones come closer and listen to the <laughs> responses. This is one. What is the method? Is it meditation? How long does it take? <laughs> mm. Yes, it is meditation, but it is not those that you always imagine. This meditation requires no effort. Mm. And then how long does it take? Very quick. <laughs> when you are initiated, you immediately know, very quickly. Just a minute and you get in this contact with God power. No need to wait too long. Mm. What do you think of? Gandhi and Martin Luther King. Ah, I respect them very much. If the world was full of people like Gandhi and Martin Luther King, then I give up my job. Yes, and we all sing together every day and we'll be sun shining. It is a pity these kind of people are so here. Don't you agree? Yes. <laughs> Since you had an opportunity to be a Catholic and you have expressed so many similarities between Buddhism and Christianity, why did you choose Buddhism? Oh, okay, I can change. <laughs> I can change tomorrow to Catholic. <laughs> but what's the use of that? I already told you, whatever you are, you stay there, because this is only an outer appearance. It makes no difference to the inside. When you are enlightened, if you are a Buddhist or you are Catholic, you are still enlightened. Understand? So if I change to Catholic, none. Then people will ask me, Oh, why did you choose Catholic? <laughs> then it makes complications. I think I stay where I am. Hmm? How does the method work? How do I do it? Oh, yes. Uh, wait a minute, I will tell you. At initiation time, it works immediately. 
What is the purpose of life? How can one know if reincarnation really exists? What is the soul and what is its origin? What is the purpose of life? I think we only know it after enlightenment. Now, I tell you so much and you would not understand. You will not even believe me. The purpose of life is that God sent us here to bless this world with our innate power. But we bless so much and then we are exhausted. Our treasure runs out, our power runs out, and we need now to recharge. And we don't know it. So uh, my mission is to come to recharge you. And then you can bless this life, this world again. And then you can go home, not empty-handed, but full and blissful, as you were originally, since a time without beginning. Uh, how can we know if reincarnation really exists? Ha! Huh. I told you already, in the Bible, Jesus also said He's a reincarnation of such and such great past masters. But anyhow, we couldn't believe Him unless we ourselves go to the second world sphere and see the library of the Book of Life. Then we have no more doubts about that. Therefore, there are many people, uh, Buddhist monks or Catholic monks, some of them know their past lives, but the trouble is we have difficulty believing them. Mm. And what is the soul? Yeah, I have told you, the soul, it is our real self which is now dormant. We have to awaken it. And this is called awakening or enlightenment. And then you will know what the soul is. Now you only know what the body is <laughs> and the brain is. And after awakening, you know what the soul is. For a mentally ill person on medication, what are the chances for enlightenment? I think if this person understands my talk, then he can get initiated and then get help better every day, no need for his medication. If you have come here and understand my talk, that means you are not really mentally ill. You may be depressed or slow thinking or out of society because sometimes we think not the same as society and people think we are mentally ill. It may not be the case, may not be. We cannot put up with this society pressure and then people think we are not. Sometimes it's like that. Can you display any miraculous power, <laughs> such as levitation, flying, or teleportation, appearing in many places at once? Are these things not important? No, they are not important. These miraculous powers are not important. Aeroplanes can fly. They are not masters. Hmm? Insects are flying all over. They are not masters. There is no need to bird people or uh, insects to prove that you are a real master. Even if I could do so, people might think I'm a bird and shoot me down. So I won't do it. <laughs> I'm not stupid. People have guns. Can you believe it? In this society, a man flying in the sky, you are asking for trouble. <laughs> Don't you think so? Uh, yes, yes. <laughs> Thank you. And as for appearing in many places at once, yes, I can do it. But it's not with this body, it's with the transformation bodies, I have told you. And to see my transformation bodies, you have to use different eyes, or be in some very special, blessed conditions. But I would not do it just to prove myself. Jesus said, don't try your God. If I always have to prove myself, then I think I'm not worth your trust. Someone who keeps trying to prove how great she or he is, then he or she is not really great. You must use logic and wisdom talk to induce people to find their own logic and wisdom. If they have enough wisdom, they believe you. If you use this kind of magical trick, the children's game, playing tricks on people, I think this is not worth its salt 
Hmm? Sorry, you can use and go and find the magician and they will do it. <laughs> they fly in the air, levitate. This is by the children talk. Hmm. My disciples, if they do it, I will scold them and say, you are getting into demons. This is a small thing. This is not worth it. When you practice, you might get into this kind of levitation just one or two times a minute. That means you have some demons in you. Nothing to be proud of and to be talked about. I should not even talk about that. Letting people know you are kind of possessed. <laughs> a great master would not do these kinds of tricks. I'm sorry. And this is a kind of misinformation from the West. How can we know for sure that there is a God? Oh, we can know when we practice this Kuan Yin method every day, we are in contact with God. We can see God like I see you, even clearer than I see you, because I see with a clearer eye, with a wisdom eye, not with the clouded eyes and a tainted vision of a human's understanding. When we see God, it's more clear. Hmm? Is Jesus Christ correct or will there be reincarnation? Jesus Christ was correct. He said, I am the light of the world as long as I am in the world. That means there are others who come afterward. He also says, so, don't grieve for me, for after I go, I will send the comforters. Is not so? He said, I will send some comforters to you. That means different reincarnations will come, other sages, other prophets will come. So he was Supreme Master Ching Hai, my question is twofold. First, a brief description of the practice that you teach. Second, can you imagine any conflict between this practice and others? Mm. A brief description is that. I will show you how to concentrate in order to contact this heavenly God power or light within and to hear the inner word or the word of God within. That is basically a so-called method. But to do so, I don't use any language. I may talk to you and explain to you all different kinds of heavens, scenery, or different levels of consciousness. And wherever you are, you may know what your level is. I may explain all these outer things, but the method is transmitted by complete silence. When I am silent, that is when I transmit it to you, and then you will see the light and hear the sound. And now I am talking, you see nothing, and you hear nothing. Oh. So the method is actually no method. It is a transmission of the inner power from person to person, from heart to heart. Therefore, we call it in Zen, Ying Xing. It means heart stem. <laughs> That's it. Heart means our power, our inner wisdom, not this physical heart. Therefore, there is no method to talk about, really, except when you are in contact with God, then you can transmit it. He allows you to. Understand that? But then, whatever it is you see, you will get enlightened. You will see the light, you will hear the sound, and you will see some heavenly abodes. You may see Jesus, you may see Buddha, you may learn with them something of the ancient wisdom. And that is the benefit from the method, the success of the method. But the method itself is no method. It's only the silent transmission of the lamp, of the light. Now, what is the first real step in order to have a little wisdom and enlightenment? What is the first step is the initiation. You're willing to let me open the wisdom eye for you. You're willing to let me uh, open the wisdom ears for you. And you're willing to let me open the God blessing power within you, for you. And every day you use it because I have the key. You hear the saying, Peter has a key to heaven. Now he gave it to me. <laughs> uh, page 100, 
5 of your booklet, 6 line first. How do you handle the problem of inner sound? Is that right? Example, high frequencies after a period of gestation can be registered by the human fetus inside the womb. The implications of uh, gestation since it logically leads to inner sound frequencies. Programming a response after birth. I'm afraid that I'm not as intelligent as you. Uh, may this person enlighten me a little bit more? Ah, may I hear some enlightening explanation? Uh, or gone. Or oh, then the problem is solved. <laughs> When I go home, I will, I will look into it a little bit more than I understand because of the writing. What do you mean by inside the worm there is already vibration? He understood differently from what I wrote. That is a different thing. I did not write like that in my book. In my book, I say that the babies in the worm have contact with this wondrous sound. Therefore, he is very happy. And when he is upside down, even he is still happy. He doesn't feel drowned and... Uh, dissatisfied because he is in contact with the God power. That's what I mean. And he talks about frequencies and the ones that can hear with the apparatus of science. How can we stop looking at people we think we know through the images of the past? Uh, just stop. <laughs> huh? Just don't look. How can we let go of grievances that keep are stuck in our miserable state. Yeah, that's true. Yes, we have to go out of it. Get initiation and feel lifted up. All the burden will be washed away. Even when your parents die, you know where they are going and you don't grieve so much. You will see the Master come and take them to heaven so you won't grieve. And after you practice, you see all your friends, your relatives, go to a happier sphere. And so instead of grieving, you feel happy. And that's the secret of happiness, because seeing is believing. Why do you grieve? Like when somebody left you or died, then you grieve, because you don't know where he is going. You feel the loss. But if you know where he is going, that he enjoys somewhere, and you can even visit him, then you don't grieve. That's the secret of practicing. That's the benefit, and that's why we must practice. Is it possible for one to achieve enlightenment or by oneself, or must we align ourselves with organized religion or discipline? No, 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 no. We have to achieve enlightenment all by ourselves. Religion cannot help us. Religions are only doctrines left behind by past enlightened masters. We can only make reference to it, refer to it, to compare with our enlightenment now, to see if we are in accord with the ancient masters, if our methods are correct, if our enlightenment is like theirs. And that's the good of the doctrines. Just like I just mentioned Jesus when he was initiated or baptized. Actually, baptized means initiated. He saw the light come from heaven like a dove. Now, if we got initiation for Supreme Master Ching Hai and we see the light come down <laughs> like a dove or whatever, then we know, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she, she transmits the same method. That's just for our reference. Otherwise, the Bible cannot enlighten us. Any religions, Bible, cannot help us get the inner light and the inner happiness and satisfaction. Only the transmission from the real living God power can fulfill all our desires. This is a new one. Initiation requires one to meditate two and a half hours per day. May I substitute this by chanting Nam Mo Range Kyo? I do not want to give up this religion. Actually, it makes no difference to me whether you carry on chanting this or not. I have no objection to your religion. I'm just afraid that if you devote uh, your time to chanting this, then you don't have enough quiet silence 
to contact this quiet power, because if we use our mouth, then we are busy. Hmm? God doesn't come with chanting. God comes all in silence. I will also teach you to chant something, but don't use the mouth, use the wisdom. And then you can also find the light through our method. When one is gardening, growing vegetables, is it in conflict with Buddhism to kill the creatures that eat the vegetables? How should one deal with these lower life forms? If you feel the conflict, then I would advise you, we all starve to death. <laughs> hmm? Because even breathing would kill a lot of invisible creatures. So what shall we do? We cannot eat vegetables, we cannot grow vegetables, we couldn't even breathe, we couldn't even walk because we kill all living things. What is the solution? No solution except to meditate and cleanse this karma, unavoidable karma. We live in this world, more or less, we have to kill worms, kill insects. Every time you wash your hands, that is killing. Disinfecting things is killing. But what do we do with this? We have to. But then we have other things. Then we don't do this intentionally. That's a different thing from violence. Understand? We have to live here, so we must eat something to live. We have to breathe, we have to wash our hands. But this unavoidable, a karma doesn't mean zero. Even though we don't do it intentionally, we still have the karma. It means we still have the sin. So we have to do our method, the Guan Yin method, every day to clean this out. Then we can be free of karma. Otherwise, there is no way we can be free of killing. I am sorry. Therefore, we need to practice the method of cleansing. Otherwise, you can do good deeds, you don't kill, that's enough. No, no, even eating vegetables is killing. Vegetables have life. So you must use some powerful power to cleanse this small karma in order to be free. If you like, tomorrow come back. And now I have to uh, convey to people the enlightenment method. And if you don't want to get initiation, please leave now, as our time is very limited. Uh, I'm happy to have you, and come back tomorrow again after you have reflected. Come back tomorrow, I still have a lecture. Thank you for coming. <laughs> All right, yes, if tomorrow people inquire, I request, then I will give initiation again. You have a night to think it over. <laughs> Thank you, sir. To learn and understand enlightenment from Thank you. Master Chin Hai. Yeah. Please bring your friends and relatives here tomorrow, same time, 7.30 yes. p.m. Tomorrow we will do it again. <laughs> Don't worry. I think I will give it every day for your own convenience sake, because America is so busy. You can't. Maybe you can come today, but cannot come tomorrow. Who knows? Miss a chance. Now, all of you who want initiation, come up front. All of you who do not want today may come back tomorrow. <laughs> come in the front and you can listen to me better and can see me clearer. <laughs>